Well, hi everyone. Time for another update on the I-471 emergency repair project. This is the Daniel Carter Beard Bridge I-471 over the Ohio River. I've done previous videos about this and uh, this video update ties in with things that I've said in the past as well as the new information that has been conveyed by spokespeople associated with the Ohio Department of Transportation. So they had a press conference on Wednesday, November 27th, so right before Thanksgiving, and they announced that they expected to have the repairs complete and the bridge southbound lanes reopen to traffic by early March 2025, and if that was everything going perfectly situation. And they suggested that there could be delays with material delivery, as well as construction delays associated with inclement weather, winter weather. But let's go through the details because I think they finally gave a lot more information that was lacking in previous news releases and press conferences, and even a hearing that they had with Cincinnati City Council. But unfortunately, they've also made what I consider to be some seriously misleading statements. And again, I'm gonna go through it. And I'll just tell you right out of the gate, the thing that I thought was highly misleading is the statement that a project like this, referring to the emergency repair project, would normally take about three years to design, build, fabricate, and construct. That's complete nonsense. But again, I'm gonna go through the details. Let's go through what they have to do here. This is a drawing that was presented at this November 27th press conference showing that seven girders are to be replaced as part of this emergency repair. And you can see the station numbering here between the piers. So you have roughly a hundred foot length along that span. Ohio DOT indicated that a total of 556 lineal feet of girder will be replaced. And again, they said all seven bridge girders will be replaced, which to me looks like they're planning on replacing all of them in the damaged section, which is what I would have expected from day one in terms of what their plan was. But it took nearly a month for them to formulate exactly what they were going to do and let the public know. So let's look at this photo from the Ohio DOT project update page. Again, I'll have a link to this page in the description to this video. But you can see the red lines, those are the no cut locations. And then they're cutting along the white lines here. So they're taking out the reinforced concrete bridge deck. They're gonna expose the girders. And later they will cut these girders, remove them and replace them. Ohio DOT has also indicated that damage to at least one bridge pier has to be repaired. Now, I want to point out that this is a very dangerous operation, so I'm glad that they're proceeding carefully. But again, the removal of the damaged section of the bridge really isn't the critical path for getting this bridge up and running relative to the long lead times needed to deliver the replacement girders. That's what's controlling the schedule. So they have time to, to get this demoed well before these girders are slated for delivery sometime in early January 2025. But there's been a lot of construction workers killed during demolition of bridges. It's, it's a dangerous operation. It has to be carefully planned out from an engineering and construction standpoint, which, I, which Ohio DOT indicates that's the process they're following uh, very carefully. You know, we see this headline here from a bridge that was in the process of being demoed in Mississippi that killed three workers. This is back in October of 2024. Also, there was a fatality in Kansas City in 2006, so nearly 20 years ago, where a bridge span was being demolished and it collapsed in the process of that demolition unexpectedly and, and killed that worker. So uh, Ohio DOT indicates that the replacement girders needed for this bridge are being manufactured by Nucor Steel, that's the mill, and then they'll be shipped to Stup Bridge in Bowling Green, Kentucky for custom fabrication. They have to weld up all the plates to form the girder. And this says they are scheduled to arrive in Cincinnati by mid-January. So in their press conference, they indicated early January. So we have Great Lakes Construction, who's the prime contractor for this repair, Nucor Steel, and Stup Bridge. So as a reminder, this is what we're talking about, the playground before the fire. 
there's still been no information released from Cincinnati Fire Department indicating the cause of this fire or even the suspected cause or keeping it close to the vest at this point. But it was an extremely intense fire. You know, this fire could have led to the collapse of the bridge. Obviously, there was nobody on it at the time. All right, so I'm going to play some segments from this press conference from November 27th. We have uh, various players here. I'll introduce you to them here in a second. Now, I will say, before I worked on this video here, I'm recording this video on Sunday, December 1st. Last week, early last week, I had reached out to various Ohio DOT representatives in their public information office, and none of them got back to me. I also reached out to Cincinnati Parks and uh, Rocky Mertz. He was uh, kind enough to respond to my inquiry, and I had asked him, when was the playground at Sawyer Park that burned built? He indicated it was 2003. I asked who authorized the construction of the playground and what other entities, if any, were involved in the approval process. His answer is this predated Cincinnati Parks. The playground was built as part of a 1,000 hands project by the Cincinnati Recreation Commission, an entity of the city of Cincinnati. Cincinnati Parks, also a city entity, did not take control of managing this area until 2011. And uh, then I asked him who owned the playground at the time of the fire, Cincinnati Park Board. Just a quick note here before we get into the rest of the video, I just enabled uh, Buy Me A Coffee, which is a really great way to support the channel. And uh, I get a bigger percentage of the proceeds relative to what YouTube takes. So again, please consider it. I used all these contributions to help me defray the costs of public records information requests, as well as commissioning drone flights. And I plan on using a lot more uh, drone work in my ongoing video updates and as well as new uh, topics that I'm covering here on the channel. So again, I appreciate those of you who've already supported that and uh, please consider it. I've got a link in the description. So let's jump into some of these comments. We've initially got Kathleen Fuller. She's a District 8 Public Information Officer. I'm going to play this segment here. And I'm going to tell you that in the last three weeks, we have accomplished a great deal to move this project forward. Um, and in a traditional project, <clears throat> the nature in which we would remove a deck and replace steel girders, we'd be looking about three years to do something like this um, from start to finish. Okay. Well, I don't see how they can possibly say it would take three years to replace about 100 foot section of bridge deck and girders and repair up here, but that's what they're saying. And again, here's the damaged area. I'm gonna show you some, this drone footage I had commissioned about a week ago. I mean, they're just uh, not explaining how they're able to do something in four or five months that would normally take three years. But I'll tell you uh, what false comparison they're making to support that statement. So next clip is from Matt Brunig. He's the press secretary for Ohio DOT and the statewide media contact. Last thing, you mentioned that a project of this magnitude up until this point would have taken originally three years and it's taken three weeks. Can you just expand on that, on how that was possible and why, you know, you did it quick, but it's still efficient? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about you know, the public usually sees a groundbreaking, maybe a ceremonial groundbreaking. Maybe they hear about it in the press release, hey, construction is going to begin on this project. And then, it, you know, you immediately start seeing equipment moving out there on that site. And then the project's done. I mean, that's the part that the public sees, right? What you don't see is all of the stuff that happens in the offices here at ODOT and at the contractor. Before it even goes out to bid for a contractor to build, there's a lot of work. All of that is done on the front end, and it's all part of the built-in schedule for us. Um, we're kind of seeing it play out with Brent Spence, for example, the, the Brent Spence Bridge Corridor Project. Um, you guys are seeing that lead time, right? We, we got, the, got the grant. Now we're in the design phase. You guys are seeing the process. This is another situation where you're seeing the process. But the public typically doesn't see that with the project. So that's what we're talking about, that three years. There's a lot of work that happens before you get the first press release from Kathleen saying, here's construction kickoff, we're going to start this project at this point, and the equipment starts working. So, yeah, we've had to compress a lot 
because obviously you can't plan for a bridge fire. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they've, they've done a lot of work around the clock with a lot of people. Okay, so I don't want to minimize the challenge that they have to replace an existing bridge under emergency circumstances. It's a tall order. It's a tough job. It's a dangerous job. They have to proceed carefully, but I think it's completely outrageous that they would compare a timeline with an emergency repair to re a replacement or construction of an entire bridge. I mean, this companion bridge for Brent Spence over the Ohio River, I mean, it's a massive project. They're talking about a total of 10 lanes, five lanes in each direction, plus two 14 foot shoulders on each deck of the new bridge. So he's trying to compare this emergency repair again to a massive project. So what he's saying is, you know, typically for a new project, you have a design phase. Obviously you have an environmental study and permitting phase as well. He didn't mention that. And then once you complete the design and issue plans for bid, the contractors bid on it, uh, so an award is made for the contractor who's gonna go forward with the project, usually on the basis of low bid, uh, design builds a, a different delivery mechanism, and then you build the thing. So yes, for a new project, that could take three years easily, but I think it's something on the order of what you would expect in terms of misdirection at a pin and Teller show relative to what this representative Ohio DOT is trying to suggest. Not trying, he is suggesting it. So there was follow-up questions. I was hoping some of the media that were there would have pinned him down on this, but this is what we got. Still knowing how vital that crossing is gonna be, there's gonna be an A-sayer that say three months is just not fast enough. In, in your experience, could, could you just share and kind of sum up the complexity of the project yeah, I mean, there's just a, you know, a couple of things that, that no matter how much time we can shave off a process, like a design, I mean, there's just, you know, getting the materials is really the driver of this timeline. Um, you know, you can only do what you can do. The one thing we, there's a couple of things we can't control, the weather, and we can't control those supplies chains you know I mean you know it's going to take as much time as it takes to manufacture the custom-made steel parts and get them fabricated and then get them to Cincinnati I think it's incredible that they've been able to do this on the timeline they've been able to do it I I again fully understand the the, the inconvenience and the frustration for people who have been sitting in traffic trying to get home in the evenings I get that that is uh, we're frustrated by it too but, you know, the, the project is going to take as long as it's going to take, and we're doing everything to get it done quickly. And, again, to, to take a project that would normally take three years um, and reduce it down to just a couple of months, I think, is uh, a monumental task. Okay, again, that's entirely misleading, in my opinion. Why, why is he comparing, again, a brand-new project to an emergency repair project? Well, because, you know, there's a lot of pressure to get this bridge reopened, and so they're trying to realign expectations and say, you know, hey, four or five months, that's not bad. It could be three years, which is, again, ridiculous in my opinion. Another thing that they were doing a tap dance around uh, at this press conference was the issue of why a flammable playground was allowed to be built underneath this important bridge. And Matt Brunig indicated that, well, they were looking for wooden pallets, abandoned vehicles, that sort of thing. And... Uh, then he also said that there was no paper trail with Ohio DOT indicating any concerns about that playground being there. He also indicated that there was no paper trail with Ohio DOT that involved the approval process for the construction of that playground underneath the bridge. So I think, you know, everybody says hindsight's 2020, but I think it's a could be alleged that there was a lack of imagination that a playground couldn't catch fire and cause problems with the bridge. As I pointed out in previous videos, there's been multiple instances of playground fires due to arson. And I'm not saying this was caused by arson, although that I suspect it may have been, although some people think it was caused by a fire with some homeless people. But again, Cincinnati Fire Department isn't indicating that uh, one way or the other at this point.
So basically what he's saying is, hey, you know, this is a black swan event. We, we couldn't have anticipated that a playground would have gone up in flames like that. You know, I have to take that at face value, but I don't know how acceptable or reasonable that is. I'll let you decide for yourselves on that one. So let's compare what's going on in Cincinnati to a recently completed emergency bridge repair. And this was in Western Colorado. It was the middle bridge over Blue Mesa Reservoir. Also, they found they had to do emergency repairs to a bridge about four miles to the west, the Lake Fork Bridge. And this involved the discovery earlier this year of cracks in the welds associated with the structural steel that was made with what they call T1 steel. And they learned in later years that that type of steel could have hydrogen embrittlement, essentially hydrogen bubbles collecting at the weld, which causes a crack and a weak point. That crack opens up over time with the cyclic loading of traffic over the years. So they came through and installed hundreds of these steel plates. And they had to do it for the middle bridge. They started back in June. They finished that in November. And uh, after that, they started the Lake Fork Bridge and they're slated to complete that perhaps by the middle of December. So under six months time frame to repair two bridges with extensive addition of steel plates throughout its area. And I'll show you some drone footage of this that I had commissioned here. You could see the darker gray color where these new plates have been primed. They'll do the final painting in the spring when it's warmer. But it was a massive project and Colorado DOT wasn't trying to tell people that normally a project like that would take three years. So to summarize, Ohio DOT is saying under the best of circumstances, this bridge will be reopened to traffic after the repair in early March 2025. So right now they're at the mercy of the fabrication of the steel girders to replace the ones that were damaged. And as I've indicated in previous videos, that's typically a six to eight week process. My question is, and I actually emailed uh, Kathleen Fuller with Ohio DOT. She's the spokesperson again for District 8 and she didn't get back with me. But one of the questions I asked was, when did they actually place the order for these replacement girders? From previous statements from Ohio DOT, it looks like they took the better part of a month before they placed that order. What, what went into that timeline? Was it identification of what had to be replaced? Was it trying to find somebody that they could place the order with? You know, this project, apparently this repair work is not constrained by money. They expect the federal government, Ohio DOT that is, expects the federal government to foot the whole bill here. So they're spending money as if money's no object. So under those circumstances, you would hope that they could accelerate this replacement work as quickly as possible. So again, I think now the timelines are baked into the cake uh, once they place the order for the girders. And so they're giving them, themselves uh, about six weeks or more to actually install the girders and replace the deck, which I think is probably a reasonable time frame. So again, could they have placed the order for the girders in the first week following the, the damage to the bridge? That's a question that I have. So, so let me know if you have any questions or comments. I want to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as those of you who've provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I'm going to roll credits at the end. So I'll continue to have updates on this whole repair situation for the Big Mac Bridge. I'll continue to reach out to the representatives of Ohio DOT who are interfacing with the public in terms of answering questions about what they're doing. So again, thanks very much everyone and please stay tuned for future videos.